All right, hello. Welcome back to Morocco PDX. This is Tony. Um, I will be commenting. Uh, uh, behind the controls will be Daniel, my brother. Hello again. Um, so we left off to see Faden, um, a survivor of uh, paranatural events in a town called Ordinary, has spent the last uh, couple decades on the run from the shadowy organization, the Federal Bureau of Control, who she believes has kidnapped her brother um, and has tracked down the organization, organization's headquarters, entered it, where it seems to be in the midst of a um, disaster of some sort, encountered an entity that she has called the Hiss that is taking over the staff and has now made contact with some survivors and is also made contact with what is called the Board, a inverted pyramid that it teleported her to the astral plane and uh, she was she received what was called the service weapon concepts that were also introduced were the idea that um, sort of union union archetypes uh, uh, essentially um, sort of meta standout things like uh, uh, commercial things like uh, number two pencils rubber duckies things that really kind of stand out in culture can manifest and, and be imbued with power by the forces behind um, what, are, what are going on in the uh, control universe. And uh, the Federal Bureau of Control seems to be quite focused on containing these kinds of things, which it calls objects of power. And then you also have um, AWEs, which is uh, the um, Altered World Events, which is where the sort of... Um, forces manifest in, in locations and cause uh, paranatural events to occur. And then there's also paranatural um, uh, people who can um, interact with it, have some kind of access or control on some level. And Jesse Faden appears to be one of these people. And she now has what's called the service weapon, which the previous director had. Um, and we also ran into a character called Ahi. I think I constantly refer to his name incorrectly as Yahi. I believe, I believe it's just Ati is the janitor, but he also seems to be secretly running things. Um, you were introduced to him, and he says that you're here for the janitor's assistant job, and you end up being the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. So that's interesting. Quite a promotion. So with all that, let's, let's get back into it. So here we go. This is just after uh, Jesse... Um, meets um, I cannot remember her name um, one of the uh, leadership members in, in the Federal Bureau and uh, you're now one of the few safe zones inside the executive level uh, enter communications department to find the hotline right okay so you're supposed to um, the hotline is a direct connection to the board which is the mysterious entity or entities that are um, Represented by the inverted pyramid, uh, and they seem to contact you through the astral plane. Which, if you have no idea what the astral plane is, it's an old concept for a, a sort of extra-dimensional space that is overlapping re real space, usually, and it contains spirits or entities of some kind. Hidden. Uh, so again, yeah, those are these are just part of the game's. Uh, oh, they're material. Yeah, those are materials for upgrading equipment, essentially. Yep. Yeah, you got your one mission active. What do we got in collectibles? Research, yeah, portrait. Okay, yeah, gotcha. So, Zachariah Trench uh, recently um, unlifed himself. <laughs> in his office and left the service uh, weapon available for Jesse. And, um, yeah. Do you think that there was a reason? Read all these. Do you think there was a reason that he was trying to do that? Like, it was not supposed to kill him when he tried to do that? Like, he was supposed to survive that? Or do you, or maybe I'm scratching at something that I should be pondering. So No, no. I, I just think he was highly conflicted, maybe. I mean, I, I think the part of Trench that didn't want to unlife was fighting. Yeah. So. 
I was just curious if that weapon was maybe a weapon that wouldn't normally hurt somebody, or maybe he thought that it wasn't capable of hurting him. It's possible. Or it would trigger an event. I'm kind of just curious if there was maybe more to it than him just taking his own life. Maybe it was an accident. I wonder if that's the... I can't tell what that is. I can't read it either. Federal Bureau. United States um, of America, Federal Bureau Control, Department of Unknown Affairs, Thomas Street, New York. I can't really make out. I mean, I'm the... imagining it's a specific floor of the building. And it looks like a, a hallway connected to a, what looks like a silo or. Yeah, I don't know. It makes me wonder if it's a hotline room, but it, I can't, I really just can't tell what that is. Well, it looks like where Gordon Freeman went in and <laughs> got zapped. And... Okay. <laughs> Gordon! Oh, right. It's good to see you, Gordon. Oh, I think there was something. Yes. Oh, you're right. Good catch. Okay. Uh, what do we got? We got uh, technological restriction. Okay. Examination of paranatural topics, technological limitations of the oldest house. Summary, the oldest house, oh, this is interesting. Um, summary, the oldest house imposes certain limitations on our bureau, but by far the most restrictive is the inability to use certain technological instruments. The oldest house does not allow devices that receive or emit any redacted signals. Radio waves are the only transmittable signals in the oldest house and even those are often unreliable. If the power of collective unconsciousness is taken into account, it could be that certain pieces of technology are too new in the culture redacted for the oldest house cultural, um, I wonder if that one is the zeitgeist, from the cultural zeitgeist for the old, ultimate, for the old ha oldest house to zeitgeist them. Um, uh, I'm curious what that redacted. Anyway, similarly, these items have not been known to become receptacles for altered status. Technology may be moving too fast at pace for the redacted to occur. Modern technology tends to disappear and break here, sometimes quite violently. Redacted ancients have been injured by cell phones exploding in their pockets while entering the oldest house. Refer to 419-1935 for full report. So, I don't think I've ever, like, either seen this or internalized this one, but this explains why everything's so kind of, like, several decades backwards inside of it, which I was just chalked up to, like, the government facility just being cheap and weird. But it's it's actually a restriction of the oldest house, and, and that, that Jungian archetype concept in that newer technologies haven't been completely absorbed into the zeitgeist, which is a, a concept of collective cultural concepts uh, of, of meta uh, narrative ideas that are um, sitting in the minds of everyone um, so like you know Santa Claus is is a, a zeitgeist item in in Western culture because it's a story that is told over and over and over again but it, it can be more mundane the number two pencil is um, iconic because of its it, well what used to be its ubiquitous, constant presence everywhere. Uh, you couldn't get things done without a number two pencil. And it makes sense that that, that would be an important item in the oldest house if uh, there are forces that could take things that have strong zeitgeist um, and, and, and then empower them uh, or possess them or manifest some sort of strange thing, like using them like a conduit into reality. All right, continue. What do you think the uh, the first redaction? What do you think that word is? Oldest house does not allow devices that receive or emit any. Um, it's a small I'm a, digital. Is going to be my it's guess. A small footprint. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but digital would be my guess. No digital signals. Although, I did, I did, I, how would a a digital signal still going to go over like an analog signal? It, the, the 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 decoding of a digital signal happens on the uh, uh, the endpoint of a 
of the signaling well, equipment. It seems to be cell phone specific, so it makes me think. Well, it's an example. Uh, you know, data is a small word, but well, well, even even cell signals are a form of radio. I mean, the word could be cell, but it's a digital device. Cellular. The device is almost entirely useless. Any cellular it. literally could be the word cellular signal. In that situation. Oh, no, yeah, but I mean, even cellular signal. Uh, I mean, also I'm missing uh, some basic principle behind cellular well, communication. I mean, those would be the two biggest forms of signals that I would think of as cellular and radio. You know, and then the only other thing I can think of is like microwave, but that's a huge word. And it those are fit in that spot. Yeah, to me though, these are although maybe it doesn't matter if it's animal. What it we're just talking has about to do with how old it is. Right, but those are these. I mean, you can communicate with all kinds of those. Right. You could you could communicate with microwave. It's all about taking the pattern and utilizing it. And um, what I'm curious is, is, I think that it, it it doesn't know how to absorb digital information yet into into whatever process it does. And that's another word that's redacted is whatever that process is, mm. where it, it uh, allows it to essentially be imbued with the uh, the OOP effect or the altered world of that. Still missing clearance. So yeah, so you have the Polaris effect where yeah, you're supposed to go. Yeah, low. So you're I mean keep exploring but Yeah. I like the exhaust I'm a bit of a So I got a material. I don't think there's anything really to learn. The materials are purely mechanical for upgrades. Again, like, still my least interesting part of this game. Oh, hello. The weird gibbering. Affected staff. So apparently there's a uh, post scene that I don't know if I've actually seen at the very, very, very end of the game. I think we already overwrote the save. I don't think we're going to it, so we'll have to see if we can get to it. I don't even have level one. I think you'll, you'll, you'll start getting your clinches very quickly if you So. What does this do again? At some point, so it's a save point, and it allows you to fast travel, and it allows you to change outfits, which is not It also let you get into, like, leveling, and all that stuff on those things. So right now, maidenless. Yep, technically been in there, but maybe there's some. Mm -hmm. oh, Take a nap. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. There it is again. Our now welcome message. Alright, so we are uh, down by Central Executive. Okay, so looking for the yellow check mark. Yeah, absolutely. And all the other unexplored areas are available to us um, to explore at our leisure. Um, okay, so we have one slot and we have three different um, mods essentially unlocked. So what is what is currently on there? Energy boost. Energy boost. Boost. Okay, so I think that's just a uh, well, not flat. It's a six percent to your total energy. Down, you have. Um, so when you pick up those little blue things that fall off people you kill, and get a bigger, will, you will get a twenty percent increase of health and improvement from that. And then you have. Okay, so this is a overall health boost. How's that? Why is it a different symbol than the other one? Oh, because that's well, this one. And this is health. Yeah. Got it. So this is just a straight health increase to total. So you can either increase. That's fine. Yeah, that's probably. Right. I mean, it was the most outsized improvement. So. Um, that, uh, yeah. Open up. Okay. So funny. I, I like would come back here every now and then and find out they're like. Deep in, I'm deep in the late game, and I'm finding like level one areas I never like figured out. Totally forgot. Oh, hello. I didn't know I could shoot through there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
the okay so you hear that and the little like fading note that that means when more enemies respond in so it's always nice to know when you can unclench is it supposed to automatically take you to the new document it said collectible no, no, no. yeah but if you if you just hold i think the center Touch, button it'll yeah. automatically open the document that's what i did but it said collect oh wait it is in collectibles. We're, now we don't know. Okay. Well, that's fine. I think it was a correspondence, but... We'll move on. So just, uh... If, if you hold it down while it's still flashing in the right, bottom right corner, yeah, it will open the document. You yeah. don't have to back out. I think if you do that and move, it's not highlighted as new anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I felt like I did it the I, way I always I think you spazzed out. You lost track of it. You just have to slow it down. Alright. We're in the cafeteria. Alright, this, I'm just gonna tell you straight up don't go down there. Or go down. And, and, and check it out, actually. Yeah, do it. Okay, stop going down. Stop going down there. Okay, cool. With you on that. Well, that was good. Yeah, so as you can see, that, that space is done. Should I go down there again? No. Oh. <laughs> Alright. So we can see some uh, rangers that had met... Uh, oh, grab this with us. Uh, we met some... see some rangers that have met out of uh, Fort Smith City. Maybe they're lucky. They didn't get possessed by the hiss. Oh, spawning. Oh, one thing Jesse doesn't have is one of those, like, correct direction things. Yeah. That would be kind of a cool power. That indicator is a little bit. There. Oh, now he's, he's going to be there. He's a red thing. I hope. Oh, shit! Okay, uh, fatality. Mm -hmm. Game over. Okay, Jesse will quickly power up. So we just got to get through these early vulnerable phases. While these, uh... I think that was my first death. No, it was not. <laughs> not my. Oh. It is. <laughs> um. There it is again. A welcome message. Um, so we'll have to double check, but I believe we have this set for higher power mode. I would I think aiming and, and dealing with the map is easier. We were very careful. We're still doing it. Um. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These are literally the weakest people. Uh, that's fine, you're balanced. But like, from this point forward, these people will just be like, complete trash. There is a, um, there is a mission, or a little, like, a little sub-objective thing to kill like a certain number of them. I could never get enough of them. Alright, don't go in there. That's Toxic Bolt, so it's gonna be like a Metroid style thing where you're gonna have to like come back here. Alright, now zoom. Havana! AWE 48. An auditory event occurred at the United States Embassy in Havana, injuring the majority of the diplomatic staff stationed there. Redacted deaths were reported, the outgoing information has been managed. Event response. Bureau agent arrived at the embassy on the day as the event was reported, though federal channels, through federal channels, uh, but were too late to witness the AWE, which is reported to have been redacted. 
Staff experience sudden intense vibrations and noise accompanied by the intense pressure in, in the ears. This lasted for redacted minutes. No visual phenomena was witnessed. The scene was cordoned off and the embassy staff were transported to the continental United States. After formula I-9 was recited in the vicinity, a signal cowboy boot began to vibrate, identifying it as an altered item. The item was contained and brought to the Bureau for examination. See case file AI-85 for details. Wow. So the Havana phenomenon is a continuing known thing. And this goes beyond like a SCE. Is it SCE? Are you familiar with that? So a whole aspect of control is that it is heavily uh, leaning on uh, this, um, I, I don't know how to say it. It's like a website sort of, um, Okay. okay. There, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, that's actually interesting you say that. But okay, there's a website that has this thing, and I think it's called SCE, and it's basically like this made up uh, government or made up like um, non governmental organization that focuses on paranatural events and stuff. And it's like this, it's essentially it's like this open source collaborative paranatural wiki page. Where they they make these government esque documents pertaining toward um, weird paranormal creatures, items, and events, and control is heavily leaning on this concept. It does very much the same thing. However, the Havana event is a very real phenomenon in that, like, yes, the there are personnel at the embassies in Cuba that experienced things as described here. They, they were getting like uh, nosebleeds and, and having headaches and, and, and just very intense shit. And it was affecting dozens of people. And um, I don't know if it was one famous event or if this is a continuous issue. Uh, there's a series of microwave weapons being used and other like theories. Uh, I have no idea how all the details behind it. But anyway, so this is a combo of, of the whole SCC, SCE thing, the actual world event, and then they're tying it into their, their kind of control phenomenon where there's a object of power uh, creating an AWE, and they, they captured it, and apparently it was a cowboy dude that causes this bizarre phenomenon. So and I that's... have two questions. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. This one. Mm -hmm. What do you think the big redacted word is? The big one, okay. Um, Which is reported to have been catastrophic. Like I, I feel like it's been... a descriptive word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not all these words relate to greater things, like the number of deaths and stuff. Like, yeah, sure. These are, so that's probably a three or four. That's and, probably a three or four digit word. So catastrophic number. is 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 probably a or, fair one. Well, no, because it's got to be more specific. If it was catastrophic, they wouldn't redact it. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be way more specific to what was going on. So, like, the event was which report to was federal made. channels, but were too late to witness the AW, which was reported to have been some, maybe a uh, interstellar or you know, cosmic something that would be like unbelievable, something that would be eye opening and jaw dropping. So, it's got to be something that would be like dinosaurs leapt out of a freaking portal, Whoa. you know. Kind of level of weirdness. Why would you, know, you redact you know what, it? If it I wasn't? would say redacted if they said something like supernatural, because yeah. then that would instantly be like, oh yeah. But I don't know why an internal document would redact, redact it, um, and that's the curious part. Although I do have to admit, some of the redactions are because they're withholding information from us. Yeah. So I don't necessarily think every redaction is going to completely make sense internally. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think that that internal consistency might be a little fuzzy. I know what the other redactions are, though. The j judging by the size of that one, it's 420 deaths. And the mm. bottom one is 69 <laughs> minutes. That's that's easy. 420, 69. 100%. Yeah, I got this. Okay. Nailed. Okay. All right. Oh, open that back up. We have another. I think I think it's an entity encounter. I 
that's going to be a description. Uh, let's see. Yeah, his barrier. Okay. Field research on his entity, his barrier, confidential summary. The his resonance field is a physical implement or impediment that is difficult to define. His barriers appear as ways to impede escape or access to bureau personnel. Two methods have been discovered for lowering them. One, destroy multiple concentrated resonance sources found in the vicinity. Two, destroy the hiss entities in the area. The resonance fields seem to require support for their size and density from other non-connected sources of the hiss resonance. Without the ability to draw from these sources, the barrier will fall. Does an inactive structure made of his resonance qualify as a conscious being? Does the distinction make any difference when considering the hiss? What does the very act of building walls to prevent our movement tell us about the hiss? To what degree is watching and planning? Refer, refer to file redacted for full report. So that's cute that the um because often they would just tell you what file to go to which is interesting there withholding that information also i find it interesting well it's a it's a field research report so i guess it's maybe not that surprising that they're asking so many questions but um it's also interesting that what's her name referred to this thing as the hiss and there's already documents referring to it as the hiss oh that's such a good them. point like, that's such a good point so in the timeline is there, there is there a timeline shift or did she just innately know what to call it yeah it's kind of like a good question this might be a spoiler but we might have already ran into it so the moment that jesse became the director yeah. every single picture of director trench is replaced with jesse oh i don't think i saw and that. now every single document referring to the the phenomenon of of the hiss is referred to the hiss after jesse Deemed it the hiss, and that is, I, I think it's referenced at some point that that even is a thing. Like she and and, and she and has she, to acknowledge. Well, that. And, and she said like the moment that she suggested it, it was adopted. But it goes beyond that. It's like recursive in all the documents of the Federal Bureau. Retroactively, exactly. If not, she innately knew of it or something. That definitely oh, I think it's I think it was recursively rewrote everything. Which is fascinating. Alright, so this jabber is fucking expensive. Intercommunications button, right, right. So up on the D-pad to link the map. Oh, can you add a mod? That's what I was curious. Oh yeah. We got uh, damage oh. while low on health. Okay, well, why not? It's the only thing you got. Cool. I was actually trying to pull up the map, though. Yeah, it's up in the D-pad. Oh, up in the D-pad. Okay, so I need oh, to Oh, very up. close. Who's that doing? I knew it. I felt This looks like the... Oh, dead letters. Oh. Got a little bit of lead before. And scary. All right. So, dead letters. I had a dream, and I built the thing I saw in my dream, a machine that will contain God, but not the God you know, or the ones anyone knows, a new God. This machine will be his body, his heart, and his mind. I made it just like the dream showed me. I used the motor from the refrigerator, and the coils from my toaster, and the fan, plus the timing belt from my car's engine and the wheels from my son's skateboard. God can't move yet, but the dream said he would learn how on his own. This is just a beginner's body, like a baby's, but a machine instead. God only needs a place to start. If you want to interview me, please contact me at the address on the envelope. My phone does not work anymore. <laughs> I had to use the dialing plate on God. Well, that seems perfectly normal, and uh, I don't need to unpack any of that. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> what was that letter from? So the dead letters department is just the crazy shit that gets sent to the FBC or gets sent to anywhere 
that the SBC collects and then determines. I was gonna say I don't think it's things is, that get sent in; it's things that they find and intercept. Well, well, right. This was probably in the post office or something. Yeah. And and so they they ended up flagged it collecting for being yeah, a crazy person. It. And then they're just like, this is just complete bananas and not necessarily actually related to a paranormal event, but like this is just a total you know cuckoo bananas person. Uh, so this is for a weapon type you do not have yet. Okay. okay. Mr. Gov-Uner. I called the police, but they never came to my house. I got a problem. You got to send folk to fix it. I got my wife one of them singing fish on the walls. It's not a real fish. It sings when you hit the button. But it's got the devil in it. It flies around at night and sings devil songs. It says lots of cuss words. The devil got in my house because of the fish, and you gotta come handle it. My wife is real upset. Upset. Well, can you come? Upset. Yeah, upset. <laughs> Sincerely, Dwayne Barr. So, the fish on the wall that talks, I swear I wanna say that that is a Twin Peaks reference. Yeah. And. We'll make an appearance in a later remedy, um, uh, a later remedy Whoa. product. So, and she's strong. Oh, dude, this wrecked this whole oh, dude. You don't. Yeah, don't even. Oh, wreck this whole thing, dude. Deal with it. All right. Yeah, but the maintenance crew clean up after this. Guy. Quite a bit. Ooh. ooh. Oh, yeah, okay. Federal Bureau of Control. Greetings, Director French. I'd like to thank you for approving my request for the Dead Letters Archive. Catalog cataloging the Bureau's collection of delinquent mail will provide an extremely handy database that research teams can use to search for any connection or related topics among the letters. Aside from the more functional purposes, the archive will allow us to preserve these windows into authentic human encounters with the paranormal world. The letters came to us from various places and times, gathered by postal services as undeliverable. The Bureau is in the perfect, or is the perfect home for them. I realize that not all letters contain accounts of genuine paranormal events, but even the erroneous ones allow us an insight into how the unknown is perceived by real people. Of course, I will first compile a system to allow us to analyze the letters for any information or suspected connections to AWEs and other altered materials. So thank you again. Can't wait to delve into my dead letters. Heath Bartwell. All right, so there's some fucking lunatic that runs through this crate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is the thing. I don't know what to say. self explanatory. Don't eat them all. Government trying to control my body. I mean, fair enough. You already. Rate of fire boost for what? Uh, right. So you can boost the rate of fire on this gun, or you can stick with the. Trigger happy. It was a does damage bonus with low health. Oh, yeah. Whoa. oh shit! Oh no! Oh shit! Oh shit! Don't get a couple. Don't lose shield recharge. It does that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. Oh goodness. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. There you did it. This room is clean. This house is cleansed. <laughs> Oh, 
on again. Yeah, good eyes. You're not gonna do it. PlayStation 4 I originally played this, and I think eventually there was a support for a 60 frames option, even on PlayStation 4, I could be wrong about that. I will tell you, playing this on 60 frames per second was the first time it ever was like, oh, I'm a 60 frames per second person, because mm -hmm. it was yeah. night and day how much better I was able to take out enemies with critical shots. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was a big difference. Back. Graphically, you get some, uh, oh, I can't those are real turn, but the, uh, the real time light rendering, I'll think of it eventually, but um, oh, yeah. dead present. Whom it may concern, I am contacted by the past presidents of the United States of America. They appear as spirit guides, giving me their wisdom. John Adams keeps saying I need to fix America, but I can't really understand him. They all have a lot of opinions. People tell me I'm imagining him, but Theodore Roosevelt showed me how to fix my lawnmower, and I don't know how a thing. I don't know a thing about lawnmowers. Explain that. I mean, he's got me there. Uh, I have a great, I have great dead men telling me about the past and the present. If you'd like to use my abilities to help run the government, please let me know. I know the White House could use me. Yours in earnest, James Bartholomew. Well, that just sounds pragmatic. Like I'm kind of curious what Theodore Roosevelt thinks about on Mars. Well, I, I mean that is weird because. A anything short of a push mower, I don't think would have been around. So, I mean, might have been gas. Man. That's, 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 yeah. Maybe. Oh shit! I guess it's that's possible. Uh, well, is it book club? Is it the first book club? Thank I don't you. think we read a book club, so we'll read this. Is it? Hello, avid readers. The Bureau of book book a bunch will convene in the usual spot in the corner table of the cafeteria at five p.m. on Tuesday. Currently discussing. Unless You by J.D. Brooks. Everyone should get their reviews to me by Monday for lunch so I can generate the conversation starters before the meeting. Happy reading. Thank you, Barnwell. Alrighty. First book club. Uh, just in a general meta sense, I would say books and writers are old. Oh, oh, snap. Here we go. Okay. Books are just like books and writers and, and meta commentary about it is just such a huge remedy thing. Sam Lake totally nuts about writing, uh, so there'll be lots of stuff like that. So probably something a little bit more with the book club, maybe I can parse it out. I, I, I never actually paid enough attention before, so maybe we can make it happen. Alright, this is our first in-world video thing I think we're going to see. Maybe, maybe we, we still some internal FPC things. This is technically also one, but this is something else too, the threshold kit. So go ahead.
to the city of Dickhopper. I don't know what missing in actions is, but I sure wish someone would find her. I'll help you look, Telfer. We'll find your mama together. Yeah. So, so at first I was like, is this going to be a training video? But I feel like it's just like a disgruntled employee personal project. Bring up the menu, uh, go to collectibles, go to multimedia, play that menu. Okay. We do get. And it's not more visible. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing in this case. <laughs> the brain damage. Yeah. Reminds me of Faust. Hey, man, what's wrong? My mom's dead. I'm so sorry, man. What happened? I don't know. He blacked it out. <laughs> It's like the director says, confidential and children both start with C. And the director's a puppet, a dirty, rotten, fart person. Dad says my mama went missing in action. She walked into the city and didn't come back. I don't know what missing in action is, but I sure wish someone would find her. I'll help you look, Telfer. We'll find your mama together. Yeah. That's slightly awkward. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was two different voice actors there. This is definitely a collaboration project to make those little videos. Yeah, so... It is not obvious that is uh, Jesse and um, as Meg and, and, and her brother Dylan as Topher, um, which, which is interesting is that it's just to me that at some point they had Jesse. Um, so, I think you're heading. Just look at it. Eight inches wide and capable of storing a whopping 80 kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA, the disk held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disk, of course, but one exactly like it. A perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on, and they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, OP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. Alright, I'm curious. I want to see what the full version of that is. Just look at it. Eight inches wide and capable of storing a whopping 80 kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the Certainly, CIA. Uh, the disc held the launch codes to Soviet view. nukes. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is not the disc, of course, but one exactly like it. A, a perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on. And they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disc, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. OOP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we've, we've launched... Maybe crap in the air. 
Three dozen pencils. And once, we even yeah. launched a cup. Communications. We're on the right track. Did I melee attack like this the whole time? I do not remember this. Is that already been the launch? I guess so. I don't even remember being so able to So, when you run into a shield enemy, that is by far the way to... I just did it on accident, trying to figure out how to crouch. I, I had not realized that you... Uh, yeah, it's a very good... Oh, ability. I can change shoulders, too. I did not know that. Notes for Penny by L. Sampson. So I do not usually read a lot of sci-fi, but as far as space operas go, this is all right. The title, unless you could refer to a bunch of things in this book, I guess, but I thought it was a little vague and stupid. The way the characters kept throwing it around, almost like catchphrase, got really annoying fast. Really, real annoying, real fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I sided with the fixers, obviously, because they had the coolest tech and their motives made the most sense to me. Honestly, if I had to choose between some hoity-toity flowers and gun space hippies or badass bunch of warriors who go around devouring planets like cheap sushi on Sunday, I know who I'm picking. In that sense, where they invade the city planet and convert convert the entire population using those brain worms and that space dogfight between those two ace pilots sign me the fuck up. What kind of ruined the whole thing for me was when my favorite character got killed, not even halfway through the story, by getting a battery cylinder launched into his face by a gravitational anomaly, his death didn't feel necessary at all. Nice. More book club. Yeah, that's two out of five. He really dislikes the way they throw the round, unless you, around so much. Oh, yeah. Feels very catchphrase. Thanks, Samson. I appreciate your opinion. Look forward to seeing more book club. Yeah. So there's this thing down here that. Where you know? This is a little concerning. Getting put. Okay, well, let's go with this wall. We read about that. So, I should, I should walk so you either have to find. Oh, yeah. You have to find. Uh, either find um, these weird little like fish. Make a couple pose or what? I guess it's not strong to get one photo. Let's walk through this. Oh. 
Anyway, you have to either Object damage some power. roads. Looks like the hair supply is strong to it. We need to cleanse it. Reach the other team. So, mechanically, when you do some of these, you unlock powers. So, spoilers, I think this is going to unlock telekinesis. Telekinesis is beautiful. We'll just launch stuff and wreck them. You can crouch? That's right. I, I could have swore I crouched earlier. And I... With the... I don't remember ever doing... No, I totally did it earlier, and it's kind of weird that they... I was trying to do that, so that's why I, I was mashing buttons earlier. I don't remember ever crouching in this game. I don't know why it's useful, but... I mean, I, I mean, I suppose like you can code. duck, but, like... Oh, it locks into... Yeah, the fact that it's, like, such a hard thing, it's not like a quick... You know, like, stick to a cover, you don't, like, quick pop-up. Makes it seem kind of challenging. Well, no, I mean, once you're crouched, it you even if you aim, you pop. Oh, it does give you a little pop up. Yeah. So you do kind of. Okay. Yeah. So it does help you maintain. Interesting. Cover. Those are pretty solid. Mechanics. That might actually be a little bit more useful than I thought. So you, uh, you just kind of want to get closer and shoot down the stuff, and then you should be able to go up and. and it. I like destroying the environment. Don't do it for me. Power of Soviet nuclear launch plate boats. <laughs> it's harder to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. Their pyramids in the bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. Such a weapon. Got the gravity gun. Yeah. Gordon! This reminds me of the uh, hallway scene in the Matrix. I feel like the propeller heads needs to play every time I'm here. Well, the Matrix game. mod for the first Max Payne, like 100% recreated that. Yeah, which was amazing. I'm sorry if you've never experienced that before, because uh, your life is diminished. It was one of the coolest gaming moments of all time. Matrix mod for Max Payne. Right? And all the subsequent like Matrix mods that came from that I mean, how did the Matrix game? A hundred percent. I forgot that that even existed. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Soft lock out of the game. Yeah. Like he shouldn't have done it. That didn't happen. Just a, just a big So, um, how do I get this for my kitchen can? Yeah, that'd be pretty freaking sweet. With this deep gold vein shit on black. Wrecked! You are not allowed to hit me. Still oh, wrecked. Bastard. Got me. I need the, the tiny chunk. So Jesse will literally rip the floor. I don't know if you can do it here, but there are places where you can definitely just do it. She'll just, she'll just find what she wants to do. I think your the white bar at the top tells you how much of a telekinetic use you have. But yeah, it's exactly that. It's directly related to how much monster energy drinks. I guess. I can't get it. 
Or is it how many vape hits he's had? Oh. Well, vape time? I mean, I'm sure this resonates with a lot of people. <laughs> Vaping is a energy people. What, what gives you more telekinesis? Oh, it's gotta be vaping or monster energy. And I'm sure this is all good. Oh, uh, Bowie needs this. Oh, yeah. I feel like I had it all. There you are. I had to find this moment. You were gone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we pressed the wrong button. Floppy disk OOP. Containment procedure must be contained in a cell with no other loose material. Description per utility. The object is an 8 inch diskette containing Soviet era nuclear launch codes. When bound, the object allows para-utilitarians to telekinetically lift material and throw it a short distance. See Dr. Dollar's presentation, 11.15 for more information. The object is currently bound to redacted for research. That's going to be Dr. D uh, or, uh, Director Trench, I got to assume, but I could be wrong about that. Background, stolen for a Soviet military base located in redacted by agents, redacted and redacted in the CIA. The disk had contained launch codes to redacted missiles, believed to be reserved for the use against redacted. After being returned to America, the disk had began throwing computational hardware at members of the decoding team and informing them that it hit the bureau off and it was requisitioned by agents the next day. That's actually a little interesting. Uh, I mean, there's got to be CIA agents because they originally had it. Well, no. It says with CIA. So this is a multi-operational thing. This has got to be agents from different countries or different different branches of government. But this has got to be a multi agents multinational operation stolen from a Soviet military base located. Mm -hmm. That's a small word. It's not like it's Gaznagrad or yeah. Petersburg or you know. It's an interesting small. You know, that's got to be a Russian word. Yeah, Moscow. Could be Moscow, absolutely. Actually, that would fit very, in there nicely. By agents, multi. I mean, that's a big word. I mean, and that's got to be a lot. It's got to be a joint operation. The, the, the fact that the before the missiles is redacted, though. I mean, it's the nuclear launch, nuclear launch codes. So why redact the type of missile and then believe to be reserved for use against a redacted purpose? So, I wonder if it was always a pair utilitarian. Um, thing like it was a missile designed to take on an AWE or uh, or or reserve to deal with OOPs like something related like a Soviet version of the FBC, you know, like this is like some kind of Soviet response to these same paranormal or paranatural events. Well, it would be very interesting to think that they weaponized paranormal entities. I'm also curious about the fact that the object of power being a, a floppy disk. Does that mean certain people holding this now have that ability? Yes, 100%. It talks about how uh, currently bound to redacted, so that would have been whoever was the previous, previous para-utilitarian, and para -util directors are usually para-utilitarian, so it was probably Trench. Is that what the redacted word well, is? It could, be, it could be somebody else. By agents, para-whatever para you just said, utilitarian, and that could be the other agency, international agency. Eight by agents, para utilitarians, and you know that could be British MI5, or that could be you know any other major world powers. See, you know, yeah. MI5 agents, whatever that's similar to the CIA. It's, it's interesting. They're joint operation. Clearly. It's it's interesting because it does allude to a aspect of control that isn't fully explored, and does make me wonder if they'll lean into a little bit more in the future. Um, the whole agency worldwide Cold War esque kind of thing. Cut off. And then you start wondering about it. Like um, I would pause it, well. and then we're gonna have to uh, close out. Um, so this was episode two. Uh, commented control long play. Uh, you have me commenting, Tony, uh, and the hundred girls is Daniel for channel Morocco BX. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.